My name's Kamal Grant. I'm the, uh, I'm the owner, CEO, I'm the owner, CEO, president, head baker, proprietor, head dishwasher, dough roller, donut flipper, donut master, overall dictator of the world's greatest donut shop, Sublime Donuts, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for having me. How many of you out here had a great donut before 2008? Nobody, because in August 25th, 2008, Sublime Donuts opened up to zero fanfare, cricket, seriously, nobody was there. Months prior, months prior, Starry Eye Kamal went loan shopping, hoping that some bank would help give me a loan. Um, so hoping that some bank would come give me a loan. So I'm going around to all the different banks, derp, 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 rejection, rejection, rejection. And I'm wondering, why, why am I not getting a loan? Maybe I'm not tall enough. Maybe they only give loans to tall people. These two guys are tall, they get loans. So I don't know if anyone remembers uh, what happened on September 28, 2008, only a month later. The stock market crashed and devastated the American economy. Unbeknownst to me, I, unbeknownst to me, as I'm going around the traditional banks, they already knew that they didn't have any money to give away. Because I literally heard that they were literally giving money away. I had a 33-page business plan. I went to score counseling. I had more than enough training in the donut and hospitality field. And more, yeah, I had more than enough training in the donut and hospitality field. I just needed the money. So when you're broke down and out and penniless and you still have that dream, you get creative about manifesting your dream and turning it into a reality. So that's when I came up with the idea of field, field of Dreams Marketing. If you build it, he will come. Field of Dreams Marketing. Inspired by this movie, it's an 80s movie that stars Kevin Costner, if spoiler alert. It's about him reconciling his relationship with his deceased father. Um, he builds a baseball field in the middle of his cornfield and invites all of history's baseball greats to come play. He keeps building it, he keeps playing it, he's motivated by the mantra, if you build it, he will come. That's essentially what happened to me. Well, not really, but I'll explain. Thinking of those three things, I took three things into account. If you build outrageous donuts, people will come. So taking those three things, I, I uh, worked, we gotta be the expert, be creative, and be, um, and, uh, and be audacious. Part of being the expert is, is Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. It takes 10,000 hours of deliberate work or practice to become exceptional. You must really fall in love with the practice. You must fall in love with the practice to become an expert on anything. And that's essentially what happened to me. In high school, I decided that I love sweets and I wanted to become a great pastry chef. In order to become a great pastry chef, in order to become a great pastry chef, I, wouldn't, I didn't have any money for college, so I went to the Navy. And in the Navy, I could have chosen any job in the Navy, but I was committed to becoming a great pastry chef, so I chose to cook in the Navy. And it's not easy cooking for 300 angry sailors down the middle Pacific Ocean, <laughs> i tell you. And after the Navy, I went to the Culinary Institute of America, the world's premier culinary college. You see that beautiful campus? It's like the Harvard of food, or the Hogwarts of cooking. The <laughs> culinary Cambridge, as they might say. So, after that, uh, I learned the fine art of baking from some of the world's greatest master bakers there. After that, I went to the American Institute of Baking, which is another school where you learn the production and technology and science of, about all the ingredients and the baking and technology behind it. That's sort of like the bread MIT or the Georgia Tech of gastronomy. <laughs> so after that, I decided, uh, you know, uh, after that, I got a job as a commercial baker. And after years as a commercial baker, I, I decided it was time to make my dream a reality. And I had to take the next steps in, in making my dream a reality because if you build it, they will come. And, um, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> after a year, you know, and after, you know, after that, I read and analyzed every book on donut making and, and the donut industry that I could think of. I mastered SWOT analysis. I figured out my competitive advantage. I not only re read about the big corporate mammoth brands, I read about the smaller local shops and figured out what they were doing wrong and what, what I could improve upon. And after that, I had more than enough, more than way past 10,000 hours of flooding my mind with donut business stats, analytics, and ideas. By that time, I was ready. I was the donut master. I knew all things donuts. You know. <laughs> this is what happens when you reach uh, donut level over 9,000. You turn into you know, <laughs> donut master. So, the part about being creative is you have to, and the, the Culinary Institute of America gave me the science, gave me the culinary background to deliver fine donuts, fine donuts with classical techniques. The American Institute of Baking gave me the production science to deliver, to make mass quantity of donuts and not sacrifice quality and develop new concepts in a production setting. And in the Navy, in my travels in the Navy, I got to try things and, and broaden my palate with the culinary adversity when you eat, um, 
you know, sweet corn ice cream out of rainbow bread on the streets of Singapore, you know, I could take that and turn it into a delicious donut ice cream sandwich. Or when you eat crickets, pan fried crickets in a Thailand beach bar, you learn a couple things about, you know, making donuts. That's a caramel donut with caramelized mealworms. It tastes just like caramel popcorn. It's delicious, trust me. <laughs> so you learn, you learn a few things about color and diversity in your travel. So after, after all this, you know, I, I felt like I was the leading expert in all things donuts. So my goal was to make the most outrageous, delicious donuts that I possibly could, because if you build it, they will come. Donuts, donuts so good that it'll make you tell a friend that tells a friend that tells a friend, spreading the sublime donut gospel far and wide, you know, <laughs> and then people would keep coming back for more and more. After, uh, after like my fairy godmother used to say, donuts of the streets, thugs of the pastry world, strutting past Madeline and slapping up a Claire. So like a donut, I was utterly fearless and I was utterly fearless in my approach. When I first started my shop, you know, I didn't have any money, so it was just me and my mother as a part-time employee that I really had no money to pay. I came in at 2 a.m., I rang up all the customers, I rang, I rang up all the customers, I made all the donuts, I topped all the donuts, I, uh, I washed all the dishes, I cleaned up, I would go home at 8 p.m., I, I even did my own PR, I literally wore a donut suit on the streets of Atlanta when people would come into the shop, I would run behind the counter, ring them up, when people would leave, I would run back on the street and wave at more cars, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, if you build it, they will come. I believe that if I made outrageous enough donuts, people would keep coming, spreading the sublime donut gospel far, far and wide. So. There we go. There was another picture. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah. So slowly but surely, well, slowly but surely, we built a following. The the creative loafing wrote a nice little article about the donut shop, the little donut shop. If you dream of donuts, you know how poignant. The creative loafing wrote a nice little article. Then the Yelpers, then the food bloggers came. Then the Yelpers and the food bloggers came. Then the Atlanta Journal Constitution wrote a nice little article about you know, the donut shop put us on the cover of the living section, then we had lines out the door and people would come in. And we had finally had the money to start paying people. We were selling out every hour on the hour. And, you know, and, and, but, and that was it, you know. After putting in all that hard work, people started coming, people started finding out. But it's not always been easy for me. I don't know if you remember the thing that I said about being the most creative, being audacious, knowing every corner of the industry, and also, most of all, be, being fearless. We'll take a closer look at what that young fella's frying right there, those are croissant donuts that we made here in Atlanta in 2008. The same product that you may have heard by its uh, portmanteau, the Cronut, after it was, uh, Time Magazine named the Cronut one of the 25 best inventions of 2013, after it was made, coined, and popularized by the Dominique Anzell up in New York City, the great pastry chef up there. Now, I'm not saying that I solely invented the croissant donut only for someone else to take credit for my idea. and. Um, do it. What I am saying is that I had the know-how to develop it. I knew croissants were going to be delicious. I knew people would line up to indulge in such a product. And as you can see in my business plan, I even had a lot of different creative flavors that I knew I could top and make delicious croissant donuts with. What I am saying is that I, but what I did happen, I was scared. I didn't believe that customers in Atlanta were ready to pay three to five dollars for cronuts. I didn't believe so. I let doubt creep in and let doubt creep in and dictate my actions that were otherwise otherwise utterly thought out. So, so that's it. The Audacious Creative Donut Master has built up the finest little donut shop right here in the heart of Atlanta. People did come back and they come back every day spreading donut love from every mountaintop far and wide. And look at that beautiful donut mountain. We'd love to jump into. All right, and that's it. Thank you.